Right. I think there one, one thing I want to tell you. Uh, retired judges are not so honorable. So I yeah, am Mr. Justice, not honorable justice. Is that <laughs> distinction? I think people must understand. We are not so honorable, like I can tell you. We are more honorable after retirement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll also try to maintain the time schedule. I remember years ago, when I was an advocate, who said jury trial was there. I was appearing for accused number four, and another advocate was appearing for accused number three. And the prosecuting case against three and four were identical. When the jury time came to address the jury, my predecessor number three, accused number three lawyer, argued for whole day five hours, and next day he took another two hours. And my time came at one o'clock. And I told the jury, at the stroke of two, I'll complete my argument. I did. And when the verdict came, accused number three, the case was the same, accused number three, guilty, accused number four, not guilty. <laughs> so I'll come back to the subject that was given to me. Uh, I can tell you uh, what the title of the session is, what they're filing, file and forget. And actually in the nation of form fillers and filers, uh, we, if, this is what we do everywhere, wherever we go, fill up the form and file. And same thing yesterday we had it skate, tarik per tarik, okay. <laughs> that was that the session. I can tell you, uh, I'll give you three headings to my talk. My own experiment which I did on my own, and uh, two, what I did in the High Court, and three, uh, uh, and three, after retirement, uh, I had uh, uh, some work I've done in regard to this. And, and also, fi finally, as one or two lines of PIA. In the City Civil Court, I was appointed a judge in 1968. Uh, we had the same system as we had in the High Court, that's called the board system. Matter appear on board, they remain for days together and uh, it, it won't reach. And every day the litigants go to the board, the lawyers go to the board and come back and wait in the bar room. The lawyers wait in the bar room, litigant comes to the court and goes back. Nothing happens. So, what should we do? What is the problem? The rules do not change. I did it on my own. What I did was, I introduced a date system in my court. I said, okay, I fixed, and again, when I fixed matters in my court, I took into account what is my capacity. My capacity is, say, 20 matters, 30 matters. Because I would only keep so many matters and not more. And the result is, it was appreciated by the bar because my idea was no litigant should come in a particular matter of interim relief or at the time of final hearing. He should not come initially for more than three times. Today, unlikely, everyone goes to the court and wait and wait. It is not only a work for the, the lawyers and the litigants, even the, the court staff also, because every day they have to pick up the papers from the board room, from the, from the room where the briefs are kept, carry them to the, the concerned court, and then you again carry it back, this kind of thing. So I said I did it on my own. Yep. And I think uh, uh, that worked well. Mm -hmm. I also did in the city civil court, uh, I tell you something, there was a practice there it, at the time when I joined, uh, that a good judge will always be kept on the civil side. And not so good a judge will be kept on the criminal side. A judge is <laughs> neither good nor anything, not he is kept on the matrimonial side. And uh, the result was those days, there was no family court. Matter would be the family in the, in the, we had to come to city civil court. And, uh, okay, so, when I became a, fair, a senior most judge, what are they, they what they call the second uh, principal judge of the Bobby City Civil Court, a few months before my resignation of the city court, I said to the others, I said to my seniors, my colleagues, he said, this can't go on. 
the senior judges who take up that of matters because it's a matter of life and death. You see, it's not like any other law, other other civil suit. It has to be taken by priority and senior judges should take. So I was there, though as a good judge and so on, but for the first time I took up Batchabula matters sometime in 1980. And uh, I tell you, what I did was something different. For the first time in the city court, I introduced the role of marriage counsellors. How did I do that? But of course the bar was very cooperative, that's the most important thing for any success in litigation or a, a speedy disposal. The bar was cooperative. So in consultation with the bar, I appointed, I invited the set of work to Tata Institute of Social Science. I asked them to send marriage counsellors. So some women's group I contacted. So I could get about eight marriage counsellors. And the history of this country, for the first time, marriage counsellors brought into the court in the year 1980. And I did that. And I also tell you, during those, uh, I was doing that for about four months, then I resigned and came out. But during that four months, I conducted an actual trial, went on only in four matters. Rest of the matter, quite a large number of matters, more than 80 to 90 matters, were worked out. Not that they came back together. The approach was, you cannot live together, then part company peacefully. That's a kind of approach. And marriage counselors do help in that kind of approach. And of course, to, much later, after about six years, the Family Court Act came, then of course the marriage counselors were brought into the family courts and so on. But unfortunately today, uh, I regret to say, uh, there is again a huge accumulation of work in the family court. I think that's, that's not a good thing. And uh, I think there could be a much better role for the marriage counselors. In other words, the judges also should be trained at how to approach in matrimonial matters, family matters, what should be the approach. Unfortunately, our judges are not trained in that. They think it is like any other routine matter. That's a, that's a, this is the biggest problem. And I know judges are, of course, in a contentious matter, judge must know how to record evidence. Judge must know how to deal with matters. And I regret to say, in the family court today, even in that they are not well versed. They just don't know. And I think that is one of the reasons as to why we have so much work in the family court today in Bombay. And I think that's a straight all over the country. Wherever you go, the family courts are in the same state. Now, <coughs> I tell you what I did in the high court. Uh, I, 80 to 86, I practiced, as Rohit rightly says, uh, as a senior lawyer in the high court. Uh, 86, I got a further invitation to become a judge in the high court, I accepted it. And I had a little more freedom because I had always lurking fear in the city court Whatever I could do could be questioned by the High Court. I still remember a small incident that uh, I sat as a chamber judge. You know this concept of chamber judge, I think many of the disciplines you don't have. We have copied quite many things from England, from London. They are the same procedure, original side. We say an application is called a notes of motion. And an ordinary application of simple thing is called a chamber sum. And this kind of approach. And there is a chamber judge and then the regular judge for trial and so on. So the meaning of chamber judge is that he can decide the matter sitting in the chamber. So I thought to myself, if I'm doing this matter, sitting in the chamber, hmm, uh, I don't have to put on my coat, tie and uh, all those things. I can sit in my chamber, advocate will come, I can decide the matter there. But here of course what we do, we sit in the court. But we sit in the well of the court, not at, of the table. That's how the High Court does. I think it still continues, still continues. So in the city court, for the first time, I discarded the black coat while sitting in the chamber court. And I came with my ordinary shirt, bush shirt or whatever it is, I sat. Three weeks I sat like that. Fourth week I called, I got a call from the, from the administrative judge, I won't name the judge, very strict <coughs> for formalities and so on. And he sent for me and he said, Mr. Suresh, please don't do that. It's the dignity of the court. You can't do that. And okay, out of respect for him, I said no. Then I went back to my original thing. But when I came to the high court, I said I can do it. 
And so I did it in the high court, the chamber judge, without my black coat. I think I came in, in safari suit or some such thing. I sat. And of course there nobody could question me. That's how I did it. Okay, that was one of the things. But I tell you, the board system, I don't know, the board system still continues. I have left the high court 19 years. And I have not put on a black coat since 92. Mm -hmm. So I, I just wonder, I think it still continues the board system. And that's the, one of the worst things that we have, both in the High Court and also the Supreme Court. You see, the matter appears on board, and then of course you don't know when the matter will reach. As long as it appears on board, see, it leads to a sort of corruption. There are cases where, you see, matter is on board, and the solicitors have method. What they do is, they send their clerk every day to keep a watch on the board. What is the rank? From 44, just after two days it will come to 41. Again it may go down, 41. So, but every day he has to keep a gold watch and come back. And he's charged, charged per day. And everything on the client, keeping a watch 